In the thermometer current source shown in this circuit, we want to show that the output current, IL, is proportional to temperature observed by the junction of these transistors, BJT transistors, in the current meter. And the scale is very interesting, 1 plus 2 over M, in which M is the ratio of this potentiometer or variable resistor, where we can, for example, say M is between 0 and 1. And Q is the uh, electron charge, uh, and K is Boltzmann constant, and ln3 is just the constant, natural logarithm of 3, and R2 is just the resistor we can select and uh, is, is our choice in the circuit. So we can control actually how we design. So how is this working? In the first portion of the circuit, we have a current source. Uh, and we, Sorry, we have a current meter. And uh, in the first part of it, we have the part that defines the value of current by the combination of the choice of negative Vs or the negative supply voltage and uh, the value of this resistor, reference resistor R. As soon as we define those, there is a current I that is going through this branch, going through this transistor here at the bottom that I'm highlighting. Because all the transistors at the bottom, they are identical, we make the assumption that all transistors are identical, since they share the same base emitter, because the base of all of them connected together, as you can see. Therefore, we can say, uh, as a result, we can say, uh, the VBE are all, the, all of them the same. So if the current I is going through one of them, that current I is also going through all of them. Uh, so I'm going to say this current I is going through all of them. And in this assumption, we are assuming that the beta is high enough for all of the transistors. So I would say beta is sizable. Okay, so uh, also current I going this way. Now, as a result, you have three I adding up together in this node. Therefore, here we have here we have 3i going to transistor Q1. Current I here also keep going uh, and keep coming from transistor Q2. Nothing goes through the input terminal of ideal op amp. So it's important to note that uh, there is no current can flow through the terminal of op amp or come out of the terminal of ideal op amp because we make the assumption op amp is linear region and hence the input terminal is practically in, uh, infinite impedance. Okay, so 3i is coming from Q1, i is coming from Q2. That's the lesson. Okay, so <clears throat> how is this going to help us? Well, for Q1, I can use the BJT uh, voltage current uh, relation, which says the volt voltage of base emitter of 1, which is plus minus VBE 1, knowing that the base V base is 0, or the, the top transistors, of course, VBE1 is equal to uh, the VT, thermal voltage, times natural logarithm, the current that is going through transistor Q1, which is 3I, divided by IS. Also, for transistor Q2, I can say the same thing. Voltage of base emitter 2 is equal to voltage of thermal voltage, ln I over IS. On, on top, I'm going to write that V thermal or thermal voltage, Vt, is just simply Boltzmann constant K times the temperature observed by the junction of transistor in Kelvin divided by Q. Uh, that's the electron charge. Okay, so let's uh, have that in mind. Now, keep these in mind as well. Let's start with the voltage between the positive terminals of the op amp 1 and 2. Assuming that these op amps are properly biased in terms of uh, applying the supply voltage VCC and uh, negative VDD properly for these op amps, therefore we can say we can say uh, they are in linear region of operation and uh, uh, the mutual short is valid for them. So for now, I'm going to say that voltage positive terminal of op amp one, which means this node, minus voltage positive terminal of op amp two is equal to, obviously you can see that V positive is connected to a voltage of emitter one. So voltage of emitter one, and uh, you can see that for positive of uh, op amp number two, we have voltage of emitter two. So it's uh, minus V emitter two, which obviously is equal to, um, minus VBE, so we get for the emitter 1, we 
get minus VBE1. And uh, for emitter 2, we get minus VBE2. Okay, so uh, let's keep that. Now, one interesting thing is uh, for op amp 1 and 2, as I said, the virtual short is valid. Therefore, I can say because virtual short is valid, it means I can just substitute V positive with V negative. So V positive 1 becomes V negative 1. And V positive 2 becomes V negative 2, because they are the same. Now, on the other side, um, I have basically just simplifying here, I get VBE2 minus VBE1. Let's now substitute for these VBE. Okay, and one other thing. This negative 1 voltage of the negative terminal 1 and, and, and minus V of negative terminal 2, effectively, if I change the color, you can see it effectively is uh, the voltage across the potentiometer MR1. So this whole thing is voltage across potentiometer MR1 because those negative terminals are on the two sides of MR1, as you can see. Okay, so I'm going to say voltage of MR1 is equal to, for VB2, I'm going to substitute from top, so it's VT ln I over IS, for VBE1, VT ln 3i over Is. Now, if I simplify, I get VT ln and then 1 over 3. So, very nice. Is cancels out, I cancel out, I, guess one, I get 1 over 3. So, what is the benefit of this? I get, uh, let's substitute for VT as well from equation 1 on top. So, I'm going to use equation 1. And I'm going to write voltage of MR1 is equal to KT over Q uh, ln 1 over 3. Okay, so let's keep that this one as equation number 2. I'm going to go back to my color. Okay, so next move. Next move is, uh, if I show you with the red color, you will see that uh, the voltage of Vx minus Vy is uh, just basically since this current looping around here uh, and it goes to here because nothing can go or come out of the t input uh, negative terminal of op amp so basically vx minus vy is just the voltage division um, and scale up of vmr1 so what i can say is vx minus let me go back to the original color so okay so vx minus Vy is equal to scale up of the voltage, so a voltage division between R1 and MR1. So I have, uh, let's say, um, VMR1 times R1 plus MR1 plus R1, because we are looping across R1, MR1, R1. Effectively, it's a KVL, we are writing your Kirchhoff voltage law, divide by MR1 and times, of course, uh, VMR1. So as a result, if I simplify this, of course, R1 is cancelled out from numerator to denominator, and what remains is uh, two, 1 plus 1 plus 2 over M times VMR1, that then I am using equation 2, to substitute for VMR1, which is then KT over Q ln 1 over 3. Okay, so that is Vx minus Vy. Let's name this equation 3. Okay, the last move. So for op amp 3, we also make the assumption it's properly biased and is linear region of operation. It has both negative feedback and also positive feedback. So with proper selection of the value of the resistors and also the choice for N, which is our, in our control, uh, we make sure that negative feedback is dominant. Therefore, op amp 3 is in linear region of operation, not in saturation. So with that in mind, therefore, virtual short is valid, which means uh, voltage here at the negative terminal should be the same as voltage at the positive terminal. So keep that in mind, please. Now, 
and look at the resistor R3 and NR3. These two resistors have exactly the same delta V across them. Because on one side they have a common voltage V, on the other side they have a common node. So as a result, these two resistors should have the same delta V across them. So since they have the same delta V across them, if there is a current I, uh, let's say, if the current I is passing through NR3, so if the current I is passing through NR3, uh, let me show it with different colors so that it's easier to see. If the current I is passing through NR3, there, therefore a current N times I should pass through R3 so that the voltage drop across these two resistors is still the same. Okay, this I that passed through NR3 has to keep going on and pass through NR2 as well because uh, they are in series because nothing can go or come out of the input terminal of ideal op amp. Okay, so uh, therefore I can find the voltage V here by writing a KVL. I can say V is equal to, uh, let me switch to, uh, okay, color is good. K KVL or Kirchhoff voltage law, I can say V is equal to Vx uh, plus the voltage drop across NR2, whatever it is. So uh, it will be the voltage of NR2. Okay, so I can say is uh, Vx plus the voltage across NR2 is, since the current I is passing through it, I can say NR2 times I. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the value of V, but that V also appears at the bottom node. So then I can find, I can find the current IVI that is going through the uh, bottom R2. So I can say, I can say, if I go back to my, uh, let's say, original color. Okay, I can say voltage of uh, current of IVI is equal to uh, voltage V on one side, uh, so voltage V on one side, and voltage VY on the other side. So I have, uh, therefore, V minus VY divided by the resistor, which is R2. So now I am going to use what I found here for voltage V. So equal to VX plus NR2I minus VY divided by R2. So if I keep writing, I can say, therefore, I by is equal to um, Vx minus Vy divide by, divide by R2. And then we have uh, plus Ni, because R2 cancel out with R2 for the other side. OK, so what's the significance of this? Well, the significance of this is actually is, is, is high because this equation 4 that I found, what is it saying? If I take a look at writing, a, let me just make sure that uh, I select the right color so that you can see what I'm talking about. Take a look at, uh, take a look at writing a, a KCL at the final output node of the circuit. So if I write a KCL or Kirchhoff current law or law of conservation of current at output, at output or positive terminal of op amp three, I can say Ni that is coming in, the current that is coming in is equal to the currents that are going out. What currents are going out? Well, IV is going out and IL is going out. Okay, substitute for I Y from equation four. So from equation four, I, I say uh, it's uh, V X minus V Y divided by R two. Okay, um, and then we have um, plus N I. Uh, so N I and this this component and uh, plus I L. So I just substituted for I Y. But then uh, Ni cancel out with Ni. So as a result, what I get is I get I get IL is equal to negative Vx minus Vy divided by R2. 
Okay, so the last move, I'm going to substitute from equation 3. So equation 3 already showed me what is the value of vx minus vy. So substituting from equation 3, it's negative 1 plus 2 over m times k Boltzmann constant t temperature of the junction of transistor q electron charge ln 1 over 3. Okay, but there is a negative sign that I can apply to ln of 1 over 3 easily. And therefore, as the final move, as the final move, I get uh, what I wanted. So what I get is, I get the final output current applying a negative to ln 1, 1 over 3 becomes ln 3. So it becomes 1 plus 2 over m k over q ln natural logarithm of 3 and then of course t comes at teams t comes final so t in terms of the kelvin temperature uh, comes uh, here this is exactly what we wanted and uh, this complete the proof we got exactly the equation that we were to oh there is a, a divide by r2 that i forgot so divide by r2 of course uh, here you can write it any way you want so I forgot this divide by r2 that uh, was presenting pre it, it was present in my formula so anyways we got exactly to the formula we wanted to prove and uh, this shows that the current at the output of the circuit is proportional to temperature linearly uh, and we can actually define the scale by proper selection of M, which is the potential mineral variable resistor, and also proper selection of R2 and components in the circuit. Okay, I hope that this example is helpful in terms of showing how this circuit is functioning and uh, uh, how useful uh, the analysis is in terms of defining the elements or components in the circuit.